Hello? Are we live? I think we're live. Okay. Hi. Oh man, give us a minute. We're just uh, sorting out technology things. Hi, woke one. It's working. I see the chat's rolling, so. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That works so well. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> well, one says, I can feel the golden age rolling in. We're excited about that. So welcome, everybody. We're not out on the mountain. We're at our friend Melanie's house. Um, my phone wasn't charging this morning in the car fast enough. And Melanie has internet at her house because she's a civilized human being. And so... <laughs> Um, it's so funny. I was in the car being like, oh no, what am I going to do? And then she just sent me a text like, hey, <laughs> I'm over here. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> just telepathically reach out to me. She knew that I needed a little bit of support. So I'm excited to be with you guys. Oh, you know what? Um, um, I'm just going to take this. Can you post the link of, um, this on the, oh, you, Okay. Um, on the what? On, on the Facebook post that I made about how it's not going to be going live on Facebook. Melanie's got I'll it. I'll do it. Sure. She's, she's on it. Deep into it here in Vermont. Hey! We're just on YouTube today. I don't have my sound equipment um, kind of rolling. So you're just going to have to look at my face for the intro of this video. Nice. <laughs> and his face. It's a little bit prettier than mine. <laughs> um, not true. <laughs> That's not true. Okay. I'm about to fly away. I need a haircut. <laughs> See this? This guy needs a haircut right now. I need. If there's a little bit of a gust, I'm literally off the ground. <laughs> I'm literally gonna fly away. You don't want that? I mean, I do. That but, sounds like a great I did, deal. I don't. It feels like I don't really have control of that flight. You know, I want to. I want to be in control of my flight, like Superman, not like a you know flying squirrel <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. They're actually pretty in control of their flight, but anyway. So, um, hi everybody, welcome to the live stream. We're going to get started with our topic in just a few minutes. I'm just waiting for our friends to log on. I'm usually live on other platforms too, but I'm just running on my phone today. So I'm only live here on YouTube. So I'm just informing, Melanie's over there informing our friends on Facebook that um, we're only live on YouTube today. So how are you guys doing? Drop a comment in the chat. Let me know where you are in the world and how you're feeling today. Shane and I were just at the waterfall, and it was kind of like, how many feet? You think 20 feet? Um, something like that. 20 feet, jump into the water over the rocks, I landed on my legs, and so now I have like some sort of smack burn on my leg. It actually hurts. <laughs> just... It was like a belly flop, but on the legs. So yeah. it was it was like a, like this, <laughs> boom. <laughs> so... Got a little rash, and it really, it's quite sensitive and tender at the moment. <laughs> Got on video. <laughs> so. <laughs> but, um. It was really great, though. It was awesome. It was a beautiful spot. Mm-hmm. McLeod. Was, McLeod Falls. Mm hmm We're just going all the waterfalls. That's great. We're chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I think there was a Mandela effect because I swear that song had different singers. Like I just hear it in my head differently. Me too. Yeah, and the I just women, there's the female that's that's the females that sing it. Yeah. And there's another I know. And now there's like a group, and they're it was so weird because I looked at about on my phone yesterday because we kept joking about the waterfalls and Shane kept joking about the chasing waterfalls, <laughs> and so I looked up the song on Spotify and I was trying to find the version I hear in my head. I like they only had the version by like TLC and I was like that's not it and then I looked all over the internet and it's like different so anyway <laughs> strange things are happening <laughs> Rhonda says who's your traveling partner this is Shane Jason Bourne okay. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? I actually don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea who I am. Okay, they they told me who my name was. I have these random skills. Like, I, I'm tracking down 
bad guys, like, <laughs> it's crazy out here. The universe sent me a security guard. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, you guys sent this guy? Come <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, are you sure you're not confusing with Paul McCartney's Waterfalls? No, it's like a girl singer. Yeah. That sounds like Nelly Furtado a little yeah. bit. Remnock says they tried to donate. So um, I'm sorry, my, my email is not connected to the PayPal. The PayPal that we're currently using is sb at paragoncapitals.ca. Maybe I'll just, you know, can't, can't, you know, you got the computer. I don't know. We'll put it in the comment. I mean, the description box. Thank you so much for wanting to donate to our mission. That's so, so sweet. Rhonda says, I don't know who I am either. Hey, you know. <laughs> That's kind of like all of us, isn't it, though? Yeah. It's like you go to Earth, you have superpowers, you kind of have an inkling of what it is, but you don't remember where you've been or who you are. <laughs> That's a great analogy, actually. Yeah, you yeah, know. <laughs> So, I mean, <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, look, you got it. Thank you so much, Remroth. Remnock. Yeah. Uh, we don't have Cash App. I don't even know what Cash App we, is. We should get it, though. What is Cash App? It's kind of like a PayPal, but has, uh, like, other features. And it's it's just easy to send money. Oh. They, ha they have discounts and stuff. Okay. I couldn't get it because I was in Canada, but now, you know. So. Should people pay you in Bitcoin? Ever? Ooh. They should. Yeah. You like, I mean, we like Bitcoin. We, we love Bitcoin, actually. Yep. Welcome. Hi, Cassandra. Tuning in. We're only on YouTube today. So tell your friends. We're going to get started in just a minute. Um, I'm going to take a sip of this really delightful, bright colored thing. This is the mango dragon fruit smoothie from Thrive <laughs> um, Superfood store in Mount Shasta. It is the bomb.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if you come here, you need to get this drink. This drink, this is the matcha latte. This is the matcha latte with the mushroom supplement. Oh my goodness. All I got to say is, oh my goodness. Yes. Please sponsor us. We like sponsors. We love sponsors. Sponsors are our friends and we are their friends. You know what I mean? It's just, it works both ways. So it, you know, if, if you want, if you want to sponsor us, look, just, you know. <laughs> well, so you don't get pretty songscapes today. You get jokes from Shane as your <laughs> pre-show entertainment while we're waiting for our <laughs> friends to hop on the live. So um, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's see here. It's 3.06. We can. I need that smoothie. You need that smoothie. You should just get started. So... Yeah, those of you that are following our journey um, on Instagram, hi. We're so we're having a great time. It's been really, really fun. We are in Mount Shasta. Uh, we got here, what, yesterday? Mm -hmm. Did we get here yesterday? Yeah, we got here yesterday. All the days are kind of just... <laughs> the days are doing one of these, you know? They're like... <laughs> but it's really fun. Like, when I'm at home... Because, you know, as a manifester, I think, like, oh, I need to, like, schedule in rest time, and then I got to do this other thing. And, like, when you're on the road, it just you just roll with it. So it's really fun. How's your experience been? My experience has been amazing. Um, I've never been on the west coast of America. And, um, I mean, I've been basically growing up on the in, like, eastern time zone my whole life um, in Ottawa and Canada. And uh, so I've only spent, like, a like not that long in on the Pacific at all. Like I've been to Vancouver a couple of times, but, uh, I've been loving it. You know, California is such a beautiful and diverse state. I never even knew, um, you know, how diverse it was, you know, cause like a lot of it's desert. I, I, I knew there was deserts. I didn't know a lot of it was desert. Uh, the Sequoia national forest is absolutely stunning. Um, San Francisco, San Francisco is a beautiful city that I would love to go back to maybe get some property, you know? Um, and, but then you go north and then there's Shasta and, and it's just, it's beautiful up here. And uh, yeah, I've been loving it a lot and uh, really grateful. Yeah, so before we dive into anything, I wanna say hi to her friend Melanie who's letting us use her house and her Wi-Fi. She's Hello. so great. <laughs> uh, we asked if she wanted to be on the live stream. She said no, so I was like, okay, do you want a little shout out? She said yes, so there, there was a little shout out today. 
She's the bomb.com as well. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the dragon fruit mango smoothie is the bomb.com and, and so is Melanie, just so you know. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, NorCal is where it's at, bruh. <laughs> All right. So I feel like there's several um, intentions that the Galactics had for us to go on this journey. And one of them was basically to almost report on things that I'm seeing. And I think that this has been a pattern in my um, awakening since the beginning. For those of you that haven't read my book, you know, I used to, they used, the Galactics used to tell me just to go to the mall and sit there and just like scan everything with my psychic abilities so that I can see the energetics of what's going on inside the mall, inside people, see the different kinds of blockages that people have in their meridians and their subconscious and how it's disconnected from the grids and how the malls disconnect, all that stuff, right? It was just kind of like recon for me to understand the false matrix and to perceive interdimensional energy and how the false matrix exists through my own uh, perceptive capabilities and so this time when we were getting on the road they were saying that you know i was meant to have my eyes open to really pay attention to the things that are different this time than previous journeys and really the state of humanity um, is a big part of it almost like a recon because you know i live in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in the forest in literally nowhere in new mexico and so while i can kind of tune in psychically to the collective consciousness i think it's a totally different thing to drive into the city just to see people and it's really ignited this profound uh, sense of urgency and also love inside of my heart and so we want to talk a little bit about that um, we also want to get into overcoming fear today because it's a major theme that's coming up. Um, so how this came up, I know that this journey is very much about um, Shane and I um, coming into a deeper level of self-awareness and embodiment of that energy. And so right before this journey started, I think the night before we left, I had a journey um, and I just went in to connect with the Galactics to check in. And they said that, you know, while I have been on mission, clearly there were still parts of me that still were afraid to be seen, still were afraid to, you know, fully express myself in the fear that, you know, muggles were gonna see me and, you know, come after me with lynches or something or other. And so, you know, it seems like there are parts of me that are camera shy and I know it doesn't seem like that, but it's kind of like I just turn the camera on and I roll, but really deep inside I'm like, I just pretend you guys aren't there. You know what I mean? I do get nervous and I know that, you know, we're not just here to inspire each other in the new age community. We're meant to build each other up so we can face the same direction and shine our light to the places on earth that really need us. So at humanity and at, of all the humans that are calling and needing that um, divine love that we're here to be a channel for. And so I think that um, I'm recognizing that for the next few months, and it's really fun that you guys are on this journey with us, because I think that this journey is a reflection of things that you know a lot of light workers are going through because there's a lot of turmoil happening on the planet a lot of fear a lot of things that we didn't see coming right like the pandemic or whatever like we're we kind of hit and we're just like why is everybody wearing masks like what are we doing what's going on and i don't think that chaos like that weird stuff is going to stop happening anytime soon i think more than anything it's creating this urgency it's calling us into activating the superpowers that we have so we can navigate these spaces and do what we came here to do which is to hold a vibrational field and to share the most powerful energy which is divine love or god's love so that we can shift the planetary energy and existence into a golden age or a new earth right all of these things that we've been talking about for a very long time and it's been very hard for us to actually fully pull that through and so i realized last night when we were driving up the mountain 
first of all, when we arrived into Mount Shasta, I felt the energies were just so pristine and beautiful. They say that Mount Shasta is where heaven and earth uh, meets. And I felt like that was totally true. And, you know, I've been getting really fascinating messages from a lot of locals here. They're like, yeah, like they're doing weird, you know, weird reversal ceremonies on top of the mountain. Like, are you sure you want to do your ceremony there? I'm like, yeah, the mountain called me here to clear that out. Like, but we can handle it, right? Whatever it is, we got it. Um, so I was kind of on guard. I was just looking, but I was really, um, my heart just bursted when I got here. Mount Shasta is one of these places where I just feel like the galactic parts of my being can just totally feel at home. It's like one place on the earth where I'm just like, okay, feels good. Feels good to be here and feels very homey. The energies were so galactic and I almost felt like these like sparkly, felt like new earth or 5D or whatever, right? Just this expansive galactic frequency it was very activating. Um, and so I was like, okay, like it felt like there was this giant like laser or just like this beam of high frequency energy and that makes a lot of sense because Mount Shasta, they say, is the root chakra of the planet. Some people also say is the crown chakra of the planet. And I think that makes sense because um, what we're experiencing is these super high frequency energies. And we're going to experience that as an activation of our crown, third eye chakras, because it's resonating and activating those parts of us. But what's actually happening is that that's the energy that's being um flown into the planet to materialize right that's why there's so much galactic presence here is that they're really anchoring that pure pristine source consciousness into the planet so that it can materialize and become anchored and and physical in all places of the planet and so it's this funny dichotomy where people say oh the new earth is already here and 5d is already here and on on one hand that's true because these energies are here and we're experiencing them. And on the other hand, you know, if you just went into San Francisco, like we just did yesterday, it's clear that not all humans are experiencing that reality. And so that means the planet as a whole is not experiencing that reality. And that means parts of ourself is not experiencing that reality. And so there is still fragmentation. And so there is still coming to wholeness and still work for us to do individually as a collective and as a planet. And so as we're driving up the mountain, um, I was really tuning into the fact that, <clears throat> you know, there is that um, separation energy or the bifurcation, some people call it. Um, and on the one hand, I was experiencing these super galactic high energies. And then I was still processing, you know, the fact that when we were driving, it really felt quite apocalyptic in a lot of ways you know, the fires and the water, um, like rivers are drying up and lakes are drying up and like the clearly fires had ripped across. And like when we're in the city, like people did not look well. There was a lot of people that looked quite sick. And so, you know, all of that was meant for me to see, right? There was a reason why we're, we're choosing to drive through major cities. I know a lot of us have aversion to being in the city. We're like, oh, we can't go there. We're not going to the false matrix. Um, but I think sometimes going into, I mean, you can't be fully on mission. You can't know what your mission is if you're not looking around to understand where you're at. Mm -hmm. I'm just rambling. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely interesting because there was a lot of, for example, on the GPS, it showed like, there was water right beside us, but then you'd look over, there's no water. You know what I mean? Like, where'd the water go? And then you'd, you'd look over and then there's like just entire mountainsides of, of trees that have just been torched. And then, you know, we went to the beach in, in San Francisco and there was like a whale that beached itself and there was like jellyfish, you know, on, on the beach. And so like, there was all these like, just little da like data points. And it's, it's just starting to paint a picture of um, a phenomenon that's just kind of going on uh, mm -hmm. on the earth and um, <clears throat> it's it, yeah it's definitely it puts it into perspective because we know that these frequencies and these energies are like present but then when you see the physical um, manifestation of them then you're just it, it starts to click in you know and then you're like wow okay well it's, it's really starting to uh, to take an effect or and um, create an effect in our reality and so uh, yeah, I've just been really um, in, inspired um, 
but also you know the the reality. You have to be real sometimes, right? And so that not everyone wants to face realities. Everyone like you know most people like to skirt around realities and, and distort, delete, and and generalize things in a, in a way that suits their you know comfortable way of looking at, at the world. Um, but that's that that doesn't really get you all that far, right? That puts a glass ceiling on on, on what you, what you can claim as you know as like what you can influence, what you can have influence over, and um, mm -hmm. and and then like you're you're really not um, tapping into p the potential that you have truly, what you came in truly to do and truly to share. So, yeah, it was um, it was yeah, there was definitely a reality that you, that that you know we were facing, um, but on the flip side of that, uh, it, it's, it's really made me inspired to just be a better, um, inspire more and, um, bring a, a greater version of myself to the table every time. So. Yeah. I want to piggyback on that. Cause I think what you said was really important and really great. Um, because I feel like there's a lot of things in the reality that are really inspiring and urging us to, um, activate certain parts of our being. And I think that oftentimes if, you know, we're just saying, oh, five days already here. And we're just kind of like letting days go by and we're not actively doing anything. We're just kind of like, oh yeah, God's going to handle it or other people are going to handle it or things are just going to change on their own. You know, we kind of have that complacency and just let days go by. And that's kind of a spiritual bypass, right? Because I feel like earth is really like a mastery training ground. And I didn't come here to sit on my ass and just wait for somebody else to have all the fun. And I think that, you know, what Shane is saying here is that there are very specific superpowers that you all have, right? In a recent um, Oracle uh, channeling session that we had on land with Cacao, it was shown that, you know, Sauron, for example, who is really like the land keeper on, on, on the, at the Earth Star Sanctuary, you know, he's really developing his um, weather shamanism um, uh, skills. And I know that in the, the spiritual community, like we like to joke a lot, like, oh, we have these, you know, superpowers, but it's like, we really actually do have these superpowers. And it's like, oh yeah, like I can change the weather sometimes, but like, is it, you know, reliable? Can you just go outside and make it rain? And it's like, you can, you literally can, but it takes, you know, discipline. It's like, you know, we used to do this in the temples. We used to do this in the monasteries where we would practice every single day. We would devote our whole life because it meant something to us. It wasn't like our parents were like, you have to practice the piano three hours a day to go to university and get a job or whatever, <laughs> you know, which is like kind of what my parents did. It feels different. It's a different kind of discipline because that's discipline that my parents taught me, right? But then there's a different kind of discipline where you just wake up in the morning and you have a purpose. And because you have a purpose and that purpose is driven by this deep love that we feel in our hearts for the earth, for humanity, for all of living creation is that love that drives us to act in different ways. And this is a coming together of your feminine and your masculine when your feminine knows what inspires you. And then the masculine actually comes in and, and creates action and structure so that you are experiencing the thing that brings you the most um, fulfillment and joy on a daily basis. And I feel like this is really something that we are stepping into as a community of just mm -hmm. like we watched um, I, I, we watched an X-Men movie the other day. X-Men Origins. And I was like, yes, this is our life. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because now we're getting into like actual DNA activation, right? And I feel like this is just like another level of information and of embodiment that's coming in because for many, many, many years, possibly even decades, you know, we've been talking about DNA activation in this very um, abstract and energetic way. We've been talking about ascension in a very abstract and energetic way where like just like knowing about it and just thinking about it and just feeling energy sometimes was good enough to like receive the title of spiritual. And now the universe is like, okay, so... You know you're a starseed you know that you have extraordinary dna that you know holds latent capabilities that this world literally needs for it to heal right and when the earth called out think about this we think about the clarion call 
when the earth and humanity shot out this prayer to God, to the universe, and was like, please help us, we need help. And all the starseeds were like, we're coming here to help you. So basically, we are prayers answered, right? You are literally a being that has come because, you know, the planet needed help and God sent you. And God sent you because you have the skills and the awareness and the knowledge and most importantly, that deep connection to divine love inside of you to really create a difference in the world. And if you're not experiencing that, I mean, for me, it's like drugs, really. When I'm feeling like I'm, I'm pushing on the edge of the level of connection that I've experienced, I mean, the level of connection to my highest embodiment, and I'm, I'm, I'm pushing on the edge of that um, limit of what I've experienced previously, meaning I'm getting closer and closer to that, I literally get high off that. Like, it's like an addiction, right? It's like there's nothing more like satisfying than just getting closer and closer to feeling like we are who we are meant to be or who we're intended to be when we were born. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, I, feel like, I feel the exact same way. And when you have... Sometimes it's like a micro breakthrough. Sometimes it's like a major, major breakthrough. And anytime, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm on a, I'm in a similar um, place where I'm just, I'm addicted to those, those breakthroughs where you feel that growth. You feel like, you know, more of your skills are coming in, more of who you are is, you know, in your body in the present moment. And um, I've just been obsessed with this, like this, mystical, you know, part of, of myself that, you know, is just alive in, in the midst of transformation. And, uh, you know, <laughs> because we're infinite beings. Exactly. And so we're, we're constantly transforming to higher and higher octaves of um, our potential. And, uh, and so like, just feeling at home in that space of transformation is, is really just like, you know, that's what it's all about. Yay! I feel like there's something to add here. Yay! <laughs> um, thank you. I feel like so called to join this conversation because um, what you guys are saying is so beautiful and it's part of why I was called to Mount Shasta. You know, like I, I lived in Sacramento for a long time before I came here. And I feel like now can we then take that, like what happens when we, when we're on a down cycle from that mm -hmm. revelation, from that feeling that gives us this like, oh mm -hmm. my God, this memory of I'm here now, I know, mm -hmm. here's some more of my people, yeah. you know. Then what do we do when we get into these moments of like, here I am in the 3D world and for me, I have, a, I'm raising a child and mm -hmm. I'm navigating like those things yeah. and the, you know, like so, so can we talk about how do we, yeah how do we then reconnect and not lose ourselves yep. once we've, because we can't constantly be yeah. on the upward trajectory. You want to know, you know where I'm going with this seat? What? what are you doing with your 24 hours in a day? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I love, I love, um, habits. You know, mm -hmm. I love, uh, the concept of like a way of life mm -hmm. and you're totally right. It's impossible to be always on an upward trajectory. But I mean, um, in like a, a microcosm way, mm -hmm. but in a macrocosm way, it's it's totally possible to be in an upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you're, if you you can go up and then have like a, a, a slump, you, or you're like you know just kind of like a it's like a sine wave, a but sine it's wave, but yeah. it's an ascending sine wave. Yes. You know, yes. and and so your your new low. I mean, yeah, your your new low is is like the the way floor, yeah. you know, that of, of where you're, yeah. where you're gonna go. And I think that the way you, 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 um, the, how you establish n like a new low as, as, as a floor is, is through, is through your habits and mm -hmm. bringing light into your body and making sure you're taking care of, of your, of your mm -hmm. healing. And so I, for myself and, you know, Z can probably echo this is that, um, like our daily practices have, have just transformed immensely. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and this is, this is something that we like really want to bring people um, because we've been receiving information through quantum journeys mm -hmm. and, and through other methods 
on, on how we can, just how we can bring more light into our bodies because the more light we have in our bodies, the easier these things become mm -hmm. and the more grace we, we can carry. Yes. But you're like, the question you're asking is such a prevalent one. It's such an important mm -hmm. one. And it's something that I definitely have struggled with. Um, definitely struggled with anxiety and depression in the past because of how, how these like um, incredible, like transcendental got touched by God experiences, but then I had to go work a nine to five and mm -hmm. I'm just like, what am I doing? Right. <laughs> you know, what is yeah. going on here? What, get like, me off this how planet. How do I, how do I break <laughs> this out is of what the, I have to yeah, do. Yeah. Like how do I break yeah. out of this pattern? And yeah. like when it, when it feels like it's impossible, there's no, um, there's nothing in your external environment where you can like push on that button and like go in that direction. Like there's nothing. The only thing you can do is, is work on yourself because mm -hmm. you're, your DNA is, is holographic. So when you change your DNA, you actually start shifting your external circumstances and then you eventually you will see a path if you're committed to yourself mm -hmm. and committed to and devoted to your own process. Yeah. But Thank um, you. I mean, that's that message is just one I really wanted to make sure we Yeah. put out there because it's so real for it's so beautiful that I feel like I'm hijacking your no, life right no, now. No, I'm so, I'm so happy. I have no you concept so of any like I'm yeah. It's okay. If I knew people were watching me, it would be. But I feel like it's for for you guys. You're you're in this beautiful place where you're journeying and you're in the you're mm -hmm. in the space. And then there is this real need for, you know, mm -hmm. I I find I'll just say for myself that part of my way of taking care of myself is was moving away from the city and yeah. figuring out how to do that. And mm -hmm. and then every action in my day almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is committed to holding that light it's yeah. just like and it doesn't it's not like a constant blissful experience no, all day but, long yeah. but it's this sort of like oh oh my gosh here we are in the you know in the city and there are all <laughs> these sick people and there's a beached whale and now what do we do you know but yeah. no we 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 find our way back through yeah. absolutely and and thank you so much for um, you know, having the presence of mind to, to um, want to bring that message through because it's the, that message there's, I know there's a, for a fact, one of the 80 people on this, on this uh, stream right now are, are going through that, you know, have, have had an, an amazing experiences and they just, or they want to get in touch with God, but there's their current circumstances aren't showing them the way to do that. Mm -hmm. And the, like what you always have available to you is yourself. And, and, and like there's processes, there's things that you can incorporate into your 24 hours in a day that will change your th 365 days in a year that will change the church, like the path that your, that your year goes into. So. Okay, I'm going to stop. Thank you. Melanie. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, <laughs> Melanie. Okay, so. That was awesome. <laughs> Really beautiful discussion here. So yeah, we're talking about, you know, that um, almost um, disconnection between, you know, the consciousness that we're experiencing, this higher frequencies that we're feeling, and then really experiencing that in our mm -hmm. physical body, in our physical life. You know, where is the, mm -hmm. the distinction and why isn't it always matching up? And as we were driving up the mountain yesterday, I could just feel like the heart chakra had a lot to do with it um, because I noticed that basically, you know, in the mountain, even as I was seeing all these higher energies come in, um, it's almost a delusion or a psychotic if it's not anchored in the heart, right? So if we're thinking that we're experiencing all this high frequencies, but we have judgment towards people that have taken the vaccine or think that COVID is real or whatever the case, then clearly, you know, that higher light is not actually anchored in our heart. And our heart is kind of this gateway between our higher self and the higher dimensions and the physical realm, right? Is this gateway, this passage. And so I feel like um, it's a relevant discussion on overcoming fear because for the most part, um, these splint it's like these splinters that we have in our heart, they are experienced as different kinds of fears. And for the most part, it's our human selves that haven't come into the recognition or union with the reality that we are actually universal consciousness or god mm -hmm. in physical yeah 
right? And I feel like even in the spiritual community, there's almost this taboo in talking about divine love because divine love is a concept that, you know, have been taken by different religions and you think that it's almost like this um, cheesy thing to talk about when in actuality, you know, the embodiment and the experience of, experience of divine love just pouring through our being is actually what is being called and is actually what this planet and all of humanity needs from light workers, right? And star seeds, we've literally come to be an emanation of that love. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that that love is the most powerful force in mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, were you finished? <laughs> I was just nodding because I, I did want some, I had to have something to say, but I really did not want to cut you off. Oh, please go ahead. No, I please. Can just... Oh, well, it, like, uh, like what I had to say, was in uh, was similar to what you were talking about, but um, definitely just kind of like in a different direction. And um, I think like when we're asking like how do we how do we overcome fear? How do we deal with fear? It's like are we waiting until we run up up against fear to deal with fear, or are we being proactive mm -hmm. with dealing with fear? Mm -hmm. And and again, this comes back to to our habits. Like, mm -hmm. are we bringing light into our body? Because when, we, when we're bringing light into our body and we encounter that darkness, then the more light we have, the more able we are to overcome that darkness. The more light we have, the more able uh, we're, over, we're able to um, stay in that space of being the light rather than being influenced by that negative or dark situation. And so, um, like, there's all... there's definitely methods of what you can do when you encounter a fear you know you can work on that part you can do a meditation you can do like a breath work thing but you know why not do it proactively mm -hmm. right like like why um why subject yourself to more trauma than you need to when the fear actually comes up um and i know that there's probably like you probably have parts that are in resistance to that because they don't want to feel like, oh, I, I have to do this. They don't want to feel like you are um, subjecting them to to something in term, uh, in, you have to be over di overly disciplined and stuff like that. And and so, uh, I I hear you because you know I have part I've had parts like that, and I know Z has had parts like that. Um, but that's that's where you know really elegant uh, practices come in, where they're not hard, they're easy. Um, they don't take that long, but they do shift your vibration and that shift in vibration. Once you feel it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, when <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you drink coffee, right? And, and you drink coffee every day because you experience that shift in your vibration, in your body, when you, when you drank your, your, that coffee in the morning, you know, and it's, it's kind of like that where in, instead of, instead of feeling like, oh, I have to do this thing. You do it because, oh, it makes me feel good. You know, I go for a run because it makes me feel good. Or um, I eat a salad because it, it makes me feel good. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, people have um, different ways of, of feeling good when it comes to like their lifestyle. Some people, um, some people should definitely probably hang out outside more often, you know, just in, in nature. But, um, so, so yeah, I, I think that being proactive with overcoming fear is, is probably the most effective way to overcome fear because then uh, you're, you're preparing yourself for that obstacle before the obstacle even gets there, you know, or, or when, when you encounter that obstacle, you're, you, there's, a, there's a chance you might be overwhelmed. There's a chance that you could go into panic, you know, or I'm not sure, I don't know your, your specific situation, but those are potentials that I'm sure we've all experienced that overwhelm and that panic, that um, just that freezing, not knowing what to do. Um, and so if we, if we work on ourselves and also feel the changes and feel the, the, the benefits and those positive effects through our daily practices that keep us wanting to do our daily practices, then whew, you're just on an upward spiral. You know, you're on an upward trajectory and that your, your sine wave is, is, is going in that, in that, uh, that, that positive direction. So I hope that helps you guys.
Yeah, that's beautiful. And I want to just offer a shortcut piggybacking on um, what Shane is just saying. Because um, Globe Craftsman says, what if we're working very hard on bringing a positive and calm way of life and yet we still find ourselves with the same negativity we're working so hard to leave? Mm -hmm. So there's a real simple thing that, you know, is often overlooked. Um, I don't know why, because I think that the word God has been just like so... Um, yeah and distorted right like most of the time when people use the word god they think it's some like patriarchal shaming god that just wants to like you know find whatever reason to tell you you're not worthy of love or whatever and i feel like i've really had to work hard on relearning the true vibration of of that god energy which is really just this more expanded universal part of ourself that we are a fractal existence of and that field is so full of love and i think for the most part the reason why this is important is that all of the the pain and the turmoil and the depression and the psychosis that humanity is experiencing that we experience if we grew up in the false matrix and are just you know waking up and realizing we need to find our way we realize that there's so many parts inside of our body and there's spaces inside of our body that literally has never been touched by that God love, by that universal divine love energy that doesn't even know that it's a part of this unified divine existence that's just overflowing with love and joy, right? They're just places in our being and parts of us that do not know that. And those are the parts that exist in the fallen reality. You know, they experience turmoil and difficulty and sadness and all of those things and so a really easy way to you know actively gain light into our body is just by you know sitting and you know when we close our eyes to meditate I like to say that you know what you're meant to experience as soon as you close your eyes is just this infinite expanse of stars and joy and excitement and possibility and creative creation energy the frequency of original consciousness that makes up everything right that's what you're made of that's what you're meant to experience but for most of us when we close our eyes you know that's not what we experience and so that's okay that is a really good place to start because it's showing us just where we're at and when we close our eyes to meditate then we can find that frequency and begin to bring that frequency through our body to begin to restore and replenish and heal I'm going to realize that when we feel, um, because when you know that you are, you know, not only a beloved child of this infinitely loving universe that you're always connected to, but you also know that that is you. When you live with the knowing of that, you know, you're going to move with more joy and more confidence and more peace, right? It's the part of us that has been severed from that, that exists, you know, in that. Uh, in that turmoil and disconnection and really all spiritual practices whether it's yoga or meditation or breath work um any spiritual practice is just bringing us closer to that and when you have that awareness then you know really you can make up your own practices is the intention right because you're a creator being so mm -hmm. whatever practice and process that feels like it works best for you is going to be the process for you like for us lately it's been a really simple process of just closing your eyes and just being like source light yeah. source light should I, should I do uh golden movements um let's do that in a second i want to touch on the heart chakra okay. real quick um because i think this is a relevant message that was coming through yesterday as we're driving up the mountain and i was seeing all this high frequency energy come in and really was just coming into the heart and I realized that there was just this like static, um, almost like if you take a pen and just went like this on a piece of paper, right? Just like circle-y lines. It was like this black, you know, AI frequency that was really um, creating that feeling of anxiety in the heart for hum humans. And it was keeping most humans from feeling connected to each other. And we all know that this pandemic has really done a number on that right? Because the human heart field is so powerful and humans in connection with ourselves and each other and the universe, you know, that is a very powerful force. And so there's a reason why we are, you know, almost being pitted against each other, especially creating fear and mistrust towards each other. And I feel like, you know, this is a big thing because we can have, 
spiritual experiences of higher frequencies but then you know i see a lot of this disconnection or just not true authentic deep heart resonance connection in the spiritual community and part of that is you know that these ai signals they are basically bouncing off of any pain or trauma that we have in our heart and amplifying them and creating these feelings of competition and disconnection and all of those things and so i feel like this trip you know is really so deeply about um creating a really strong heart field right human connection um deep authentic true and you know that really comes from coming into that place of deep self-love so that we can actually really offer that to each other um, because that's that allows these higher frequencies to actually land into our body right through our body and then down into our community down into our physical existence um and i think that's a good segue into a golden movements okay or um, what you want to do the golden movements and then the meditation yeah, no, I wanted to show them both. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and, because uh, I, I know I mentioned, you know, like, the simplicity of, of, of your practices, but these two things are, are so easy, and you can do them at any time, you can integrate them into your mornings, and, and you're going to feel, you're going to feel a shift, and, um, and so, I think what I'd, I'd also like to do is record a, uh, record a, a video of these, of these, um, of these practices and then just include it in the description so we can reference it anytime when we when we're on these lives and just mm -hmm. direct people to it <sighs> yeah we're so excited we have just like a lot of goodness brewing for the starseed collective on the planet okay <laughs> oh man <laughs> okay so this is called the, the golden movement. Okay, so you can, you can do it sitting down. You can do it anywhere. But we put our, our arms uh, parallel with our, uh, with our shoulders. Okay, and we're connecting with Mother Earth here. Just really connect. We're gonna go really slow. We'll do it a few times, okay? We're connecting with Mother Earth here. And then we cross our, uh, put our, our hands on top of each other, our right over our left at our heart. And then twist into prayer. We're connecting with our physical body here. And then we're preparing to release anything from our physical body that we no longer need. Okay. And so we do a little flip with our hands like that. And, and, and as we do that, we release anything from our physical body we no, we no longer need. Okay. And then we put our, our left hand in front of our right at our third eye, like an X, like a cross here. And um, from here, we're, we're connecting with our spiritual body, and we're also preparing to release anything from our, sp our spiritual body that we no longer need, okay? And then we just, we kind of do, uh, rotate our hands like this and stop at our heart. Mm -hmm. And you can do this as long as you want, just releasing anything from your physical body, your spiritual body that you no longer need. I find it, it I, f I really start to kind of feel it in my heart, and it feels really, really good, okay? And then once you feel complete, your left hand and then your right hand and you're just going to receive new light from mother earth okay we're just receiving new light from mother earth here you can really feel it in your palms open up your hand chakra okay and then we're going to bring in new light from the higher realms this is like golden christ light coming down into your body okay and then you can flip your hands and then just allow yourself to feel charged okay allow this light to come into your body you can do anything with this light. Um, you can just sit here and, and, and get charged up. You can even put the light on the walls in your home. Um, what I like to do in the morning is I, I like to put the, the light on my three Dantian. So I do it three times, okay? And then I, I charge my lower Dantian, and then I, my heart, and then uh, middle Dantian, and my higher Dantian. Or actually, I do it the other way around. I, do, I go high, uh, middle, and then lower. Okay, so... Let's do it again here. So arms out to the side. We're connecting with Mother Earth. Okay. Hands on top of each other, a left under the right oh, at our heart here. And then we twist, connecting with our physical body. And then as we twist here, we, 
release anything from your physical body we no longer need. Just let it go. It's not yours to carry, okay? And then left in front of right here, connecting with our spiritual body and preparing to release anything we no longer need from this spiritual body. And then we uh, rotate our hands and stop at our heart and just let anything from our spiritual body go that we no longer need. Okay, and whenever you feel complete, you can your left and then your right, palms out, and then open up your hand chakra here. Really just feel Mother Earth giving you new, new light, new energy. Okay, and then we're gonna bring in golden light from the higher realms. Okay, down into our bodies. Down into our bodies and we can rotate our hand and just get charged up here. If you're having pains in your body, you can put your hands on those pains. If you just, it just if you just want to char, like just purely feel the charge with for, with no other, um, uh, you know, agenda, that's totally okay. Um, I like I said, I really like to charge up my dantian, uh, your, your three kind of energy centers here. So I'll, I'll put I'll put it on my heart for this one. You know, this feels. Mm. It just feels really, really good. Okay, and again, feel the feel the benefits. Feel how palpable the energy is, and how easy and simple this practice is, right? And and so the I think it's just so powerful how we're just getting these practices that are getting more and more simple, and also more and more effective. Um, and so, just really, really grateful and blessed to be able to share these with you. Just do one, one last time here. Okay, so arms to the side. Connecting with Mother Earth, okay, right over left at the heart. Twist, connecting with our physical body. And then we are releasing anything we no longer need from our physical body. Okay. And then we are connecting through our sp spiritual body, left in front of the right. And then just rotate it a few times. We're going to stop at our heart mm. here. Just release anything from our spiritual body we no longer need. Okay. And then left and then right, really just letting Mother Earth charge us, giving us new light into our body, okay? Mm. And then we're bringing golden light from the higher realms down into our body. Really just intend for golden light to come into your body and then charge your body, <gasps> okay? And then for this one, I'm gonna put it on my, my higher dantian here. Yeah, right, and I I would love to hear in the chat in the chat box um, how how you're feeling. If you can feel it in your body, if you can feel it in your hands, just let other people know that maybe didn't didn't try to do, uh, the technique um, that uh, of the results that you got, so that you can help them. Um, but thank you so much. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the one I start off my, my day with. Um, and it's, it's, it's a really good one. And then that's, that's a, a great way to, to ch kind of charge up your body with some golden light. And then the second one really kind of focuses on your heart in the beginning, but then you can, you can send the light anywhere you want in your body. You can just kind of use it for your healing and anything like that. This one is even simpler. This one's even, even easier than the other one. Okay, it's, it's two steps. And so it, it also, um, it uh, kind of piggybacks on your breath. So when you breathe in, you're bringing golden light into your body, into your heart, okay? And when you breathe out, you're compressing that golden light, crystallizing, refining that golden light in your heart, okay? And just do this over and over and over again, just kind of lose yourself in this process and really feel this golden light, this love, cultivate, refine, crystallize in your heart. And you can do anything with this. Mm. Okay, so let's just do this for a few, a few rounds here. So breathing in, intending golden light to come into your heart. 
and then breathe out, intending that this golden light is being refined mm. and compressed and crystallized in your heart. Okay, and let's just do this over a, a few more times here. In, golden light in, refining into your heart. Golden light in and refining, crystallizing in your heart. And as you do this over and over again, you really start to feel it build up. And you can just let it build up and just feel this love. And you can almost push yourself to, you know, starting to cry because of how beautiful it feels. Or what you can do is you can pulse, you know, you can just pulse it and clear, clear your field. You can also just um, direct this golden Christ light into different places in your body to, or in your field or your, your, um, in your psyche, anywhere in, in your system, in, in your integrated system to heal. And, you know, if, if you're really feeling generous and if you're really feeling awesome, you can just pour it into the earth and, and give this beautiful love, this, this Christ light into, you know, the, the crystalline grids of the new earth and um, uh, answer prayers in, in, a, in a very uh, beautiful way. So like mm. guys, these are, these are those only two practices. They don't take long at all, but you can feel the, the, the shift in vibration. You can feel the, the light in your body increase, right? And, and so um, I, I want you to believe in your ability to change over time. Like, you know, you, you, you try it one day and that's awesome. Okay, cool. But what happens if you do it for a week? What happens if you do it for a month? Like, I want you to start believing in who you can be in one month. And you don't need to know what that is, but just believe in your ability to transform and then see where you're at. Okay. And, and, and that is, um, that level of belief in yourself is going to just transform who you are as an individual and give you your agency back because more light is in your body. And, and when you encounter these negative situations, they're not gonna to touch you the way, they, the way they affected you before. And uh, what a beautiful, what a beautiful, um, you know, what a beautiful concept, what a beautiful moment that is for you in your life when that same negative situation that you've encountered for, you know, over and over and over again, just doesn't really affect you anymore mm. like that. And, 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 it, and you've, you've jumped out of that loop and you're now in a different reality, so. I love that. So. That is the PayPal, yes. On that note, um, I just want to touch on like our the power of our heart field and how our heart actually creates the harmonics that holds the reality in place. And that is why, you know, our heart and just like all of these societal things that kind of attack, um, our sense of connection, even with like the violence and the video games and with pornography and with, you know, this fear tactic of people, you know, you're going to give each other a virus and kill each other, like stay away from each other. You know, all of that is targeting our heart and our sense of connection. And why is that? It's because, you know, our heart creates a coherent field around our being. I think, you know, a lot of scientists are now researching the coherent heart field and how, you know, we literally hold the reality together through the projections of our vibration and the love that we're feeling. And so um, when we begin to focus on, you know, this feeling of this love and the purity and the vibration and the quality of that peace, of that love that is stabilized in our field and our specifically in our heart, when we make that a priority and we recognize, you know, how uh, valuable and important it is, I think that you know a lot of us we came in super empathic and super loving when we were kids we probably just like loved animals and loved everything and we had that very innocent sense of love inside of our being and yet because nobody ever told us like no adult ever told us that that is the most valuable thing in us in fact, we had to learn that, you know, having a loving heart is actually a weakness and you're not going to get anywhere in life if you love people <laughs> and all of those kind of reverse beliefs got in there and all of a sudden now we're afraid of each other and we think that, you know, we're out to get each other and all those things are dimming the superpower inside 
of our being. And so I feel like, you know, in recognizing that the reality is holographic, that if we are anchored in our sense of divine all rightness of perfection, this reality that is heaven on earth, and we're really feeling that divine love flowing through our heart, we're only going to be able to project and hold that field. And they've shown me, you know, like cymatics where, you know, a sound vibration can change the geometry of sand. So human and planetary consciousness, planetary energy is very much like that. And there are you know, 5G towers or whatever frequencies, even pop music, you know, all these sounds that are playing a very distorted geometry. And so people are experiencing chaos and sadness, confusion, fear, all those things. Now, if we can begin to emanate a different harmonic energy, and this is why they say raise your vibration, right? It's literally scientific that if we can actually anchor and embody these higher frequencies of divine love is going to resonate the planet into a different situation. And that's really what our job is, right? And that's not a mental process. It's a very physical process. And Shane and I are on this amazing journey for the next three months. I think our intention is to find all the tools and find all of the parts of ourself that, you know, I think these processes are basically called bioregenesis. It's about the process of restoring our DNA to its original mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us Darcy's, you know, we came in with super, as mm -hmm. the young people say, clutch DNA. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That have capabilities that interact with planetary and universal spheres in ways that, you know, seem miraculous, right? Miracles are actually quite scientific if you perceive through the physics of how structure of the universe works and so this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be getting into and we're so excited i think i'm gonna make a little video because i really want to take you guys on this journey with us i think the next three months is going to be really life-changing we're not going to be in the same bodies we're not going to be the same vibration yeah. you know we're going to come into a greater refinement <clears throat> of ourselves. and i would love to do a journaling exercise with all of you so i'll post that sometime in the next yeah. week and we can all dream about where we all can be together in three months yes <laughs> yeah and um the last thing that i wanted to mention is that like um because you mentioned uh basically like our, our true nature okay and our, our true nature is is light okay and so when we're trying to um usher in higher timelines when we're trying to usher in our mission what we're really trying to do is like collapse. <laughs> this is going to sound a little bit scientific and I'll try to break it down easy. Um, you're, you're trying to collapse a, a wave function into, into like, into physical, physical reality. And so it's kind of like, think about it like this. There's different timelines that are like stacked on top of each other. And the only, the only way you can access these higher timelines is if your DNA has a light quotient where it can, basically encapsulate that mm -hmm. that that um, that energy output and collapse it into into physical reality and so that's why you know th these light these um biogenesis is all about embodying light it's all about <sighs> opening yourself up to bring light in but then also having a uh con contextual technical knowledge of what the light is doing in your body and how you're um, directing the light into the into the world, and and when you start doing these things, um, then you are you basically are uh, signaling to the universe that that you are ready for that that next layer of, of timeline, okay? Because you're 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 literally embodying light in a more proficient a way. You're 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 being more like God and less like human even though you know um you are a human but you're you're just embodying human god human god child human god child man <laughs> boy bear pig <laughs> sorry that's from south park that's 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 from shane and you know sorry <laughs> Uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, that's 17 year old Sheen. Man, man, bear, pig. Half man, half bear, half pig. It, it doesn't make any sense. That's 150%. But, you know, anyway, you know, long story short, long story short, the, 
the more light you bring in your into your body, the more able you're you're literally able to collapse higher time frames into this mm -hmm. world, and and that's what you want, isn't it? Like you you want to be able to usher in more of yourself into this world, and the only way you do that is through putting light in your body, mm -hmm. and embodying that light. And just to piggyback on that, I just want to swerve back into the title of this video, which was Overcoming Fear. And I think everything that we've been talking about today is super relevant because um, the word, the, the counterbalance of fear or how we overcome fear is with courage, right? Courage, you know, the word itself comes from the root word core, which means heart. And so when we feel into the vibration of courage, it is an energy that emanates from the heart right? It's like um, fear is kind of something that exists. And in fact, when you are given a task and you have a destiny, you're going to encounter fear. It's how you choose to move through that fear that kind of dictates the vibration or the experience that you're having, right? And so I feel like a lot of the really common fears, and even this morning, you know, we're doing this exercise in my shamanism school where we're tuning into our heart and feeling into you know, the kind of blocks that are there. And even for me, I realized that, you know, there was a part of me that was terrified that people were going to lynch me if I really shined my love, my love and light at them. And I think that this is a very common fear that, you know, we have, especially with the crucifixion implant and just seeing what happened to Jesus 2000 years ago. It's kind of this like very strong signal energy in the world, almost like, you know, this little skull on the gate of a, a driveway just being like, you know, fear us, <laughs> do not try to shine your light, we will kill you. But the thing is that, you know, that those parts that feel afraid of that um, outcome, I realized that those parts just needed me to slow down to actually have a conversation with them because they didn't really want to stop my mission. Um, they just needed to be witnessed. And a lot of times I realized that they were actually subconsciously perpetuating certain traumas from being healed um one of the these great um pioneers in healing his name is donnie epstein he pioneered um network chiropractic chiropractic which is amazing he says we can't let go of things that we're not hanging on to right so if we have something in our life that is a trauma that we just like have not been able to heal or we have repeated patterns in our life we're like how come i still haven't gone out of this there's definitely a part inside of us that is for some reason holding on to it. So for me, is this pain that I have in my right shoulder and in my hip, and I always want to blame it on, you know, oh, it's because I have this implant and blah, blah, blah. But when I went in, I realized it was actually this part of me that was hanging on for dear life to these pains because they're like, if I let this go, then you're going to be in a vibration where you're going to be able to shine your light. And if that happens, then we're going to be seen. So it's way better for us to just say, oh, little me, I have this pain and trauma and I can't heal it. You know, it's really just this part um, tricking ourselves into perpetuating certain pains because, you know, they don't feel fully ready. And when I had a conversation with this part and realized that it's really afraid of death, right? But then we're like, okay, are you actually really afraid of death? Like, really, are you? Right? Because it's like these human parts are like, oh, death is so horrible. And then this higher self part is like, it's not even real. Like, I'll just be like, okay, I'm going home. If, if I died, I just go home. So what's the actual big deal? So when I slowed down and just turned towards this part of me that's in fear, instead of running away from these parts, or just um, siding with those parts, to just turn towards the part in the vibration of higher self and say what do you actually need from me in this moment and it turns out that the part that was in fear just needed for us to integrate that we are a powerful light being we are here for a massive mission we have extraordinary gifts we are here to be a pristine and powerful channel and force of god's love right and when we can sit and, and fully acknowledge those things about ourselves, we come into this appreciation, almost this awe for ourself, right? How cool and beautiful it is that we as a soul made a choice to be here. And that is something that is very admirable. And we start feeling that self-appreciation and that self-honoring for all the things that the, the all of the feedback the world couldn't give us, right? Our parents couldn't say, 
you're such a precious gift to this planet. So now we have to look the mirror and give that energy to ourselves, so we feel like we're caught up so that we can step forward with courage. Um, feels like that thought is complete. Hmm? I agree fully and completely. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel, uh, mm -hmm. feel complete on my end, but, um, yeah, this, uh, an energy around like kind of the power of our innocent child is coming through, right? Cause that's really like a heart energy. Like when we get into that core sparkling place mm -hmm. in our heart that is untouched by trauma untouched by the physical it's like when we first come into the world and we're still just completely connected there's this vulnerable yet ultra precious and innocent frequency mm -hmm. of openness to life of of love and when we start to tune into that energy is really a superpower because i remember you know as i'm like watching my little brother grow up like he was just like like shoving himself off the bed because he just knew that we would catch him <laughs> you know and it's that level of trust in the goodness of the universe that mm -hmm. um is inherent in the child and that energy was really just beaten out of us and i think as we begin to reconnect with that innocence of that trust in ourself or god the greater part of our being um that, you know, it's like that fool energy where we know that we are all powerful and we're not going to experience it until we step, take a step forward and mm -hmm. taking those steps on a daily basis will lead us to places. And we, we came here to experience those things. Like, I'm so excited because the land has shown me so many visions of us just like pulling magical streams out of the ground, right? Growing trees. Like, I saw this vision recently where we would go to cities in like groups Right, we would just like plug our light technology together, and like giant trees would just literally break through the cement and grow because there was so much miracle, like, um, creation energy just like flowing through us. And we learned to cooperate, we learned to work together, we learned to tap into those super incredible miracle energies together. Now, we remember 2,000 years ago when Jesus was performing miracles, we also know that hundreds of thousands of beings on that caliber or level of god connection is here so what are we capable of together what are 144,000 or whatever the number is who, who cares what are hundreds of thousands of jesus's capable of <laughs> we don't know and i am so excited to witness that because that's what we're here to co-create together um, it's going to be beautiful it's going to require for us to believe in that Right, so drop a chat comment there if you resonate with this energy, with this vibration of destiny. Because that's what we're here to show humanity and ourselves, really, our own power. We came here to be like, well, how powerful am I? Mm -hmm. Really? How, how godly can I experience in the physical? That's why we came down here, for the joy of that experience. So... So many Jesuses. <laughs> wow. Cool. Many Jesuses. Many, many Jesuses. Super lots. I stand with you in the crossroads of destiny. So beautiful. <laughs> I don't know about you, but one of my favorite emojis these days is the Statue of Liberty. I just toss it in there, you know? Like, it's just, it's just a great one, you know? So, we're we're out there. We're doing it. Kind of want to have a boat with the Statue of Liberty on the front. So, yes. So, follow us on Instagram. The link is in the uh, description because we're posting content every day. I just can't keep up with social media, so like I'm just gonna focus on Instagram because it's kind of the easiest one. Like mm -hmm. you have so many options with Instagram. You can like do stories oh, yeah, and live and whatever. Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is an emoji. <laughs> yeah.
Uh-huh. Somebody said they had to look up what clutch meant. Oh. <laughs> I'm learning all of the lingo. It means you got ice in your veins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you just... In, in in the heat of the moment, Statue of Liberty, we like that. In the heat of the moment, you just come in, you just you just do the thing, and you put the team on your back, and um, you, you do it for the family. You know what I mean? Is that what is that the definition? That's the definition. That's the de that's the definition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Okay, and um. Oh. Uh, Yeah, so I don't know if I want to start another can of worms, but I'm feeling kind of feeling cute. My stay the pot, you know. <laughs> Wait, don't do it, please. <laughs> no, no. Oh. Um, I'm in for this future of creation. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, I'm just considering because before um, we left for. Be on the trip and on the note of overcoming fear because I feel like part of the challenge that I'm consistently uh, brought into facing is lucidity right and this is something that the disclosure com community is really working on is coming into lucidity about the things that are happening or have happened on the planet and for the most part, you know, the disclosure community kind of do it in this like sensational kind of way. And in a, in a sense, it's good because it's waking us up to certain realities. But in another sense, it's not really helpful because it's not really talking about the implications of those things. How, you know, human trafficking and ritual abuse and the mass situation of sexual abuse and things like that actually affects humanity and affects every single person on this call on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, especially those that have actually gone through a lot of these atrocities. And so um, I feel like uh, the day before we left on the trip, um, I was just sitting in this uh, journey, in this ceremony, and all of a sudden I started seeing all these grids that um, needed that needed the clearing, right, when we're on, on the drive. And so a lot of the energies that were coming up were about, you know, MK Ultra and ritual abuse because Spirit guided me to read this book called Transformations of America by Kathy O'Brien. Uh, it's a really hard read. Um, if you're, you know, um, kind of gentle stomached, um, it's really quite difficult of a book to get through because it's very graphic about the things that this woman has gone through and the things that the government and different military groups and even the Vatican are doing to children is just really, you know, horrific. And I think all of you are kind of understanding what I'm alluding to. But in the ceremony, as I'm tapping into the collective consciousness and, you know, really feeling into that stuff... I just basically started rolling on the ground and was like, I'm not cut out for this job. I was yelling at the Galactics, like, get me out of here. You know, I can't do this. I don't know what you want me to do about this. Like, I'm just feeling, and I was feeling all of those energy inside of my own body too. Um, something that I've been working through is just how, you know, our society has really brainwashed our youth around sexuality and it's that distortion that like reversal you know that degra degradation of creation basically right of, of all of creation um it's been something that is very difficult for my angelic being to experience inside of my human body having grown up in that reality and having discovered pornography at a really young age you know all those things were ways that this being was abused by the reality and I think when we look at it that way we realize that this perverse um, degraded um, false matrix has really abused all of us to certain degrees and and ritual abuse is really on the end of the spectrum but I don't feel like there are many people that are spared from that abuse and so as I was going into my body and into the collective energies and really seeing the interdimensional gunk piles that are there to be cleared you know i just rolled around on the floor i was like i'm not cut out for this like i think you guys got the wrong woman <laughs> i don't know what you want me to do about this but i am <laughs> and um you know and it was really scary those realms are really scary those things that have happened are really scary demons are really scary the energy that they hold and the consciousness and how they can do these horrible things 
make no sense to my brain and are really scary. But the thing is that, you know, I think because maybe I'm just a sucker for punishment, I keep coming back into these spaces because I asked my higher self, you know, what is the most important thing for me to do? And coming into lucidity is a really big part of that. And so coming into lucidity has many different parts, right? There's different things that we need to come into lucidity about. The first part of this conversation has been the importance of coming into lucidity of the fact that we are literally divine love incarnate. We're literally God's angels and we came out of God's intention to heal, to bring support to this planet, right? We are an answered prayer and we're here to anchor so much divine love that we're just creating miracles everywhere, right? That's something that we're coming into lucidity about. And on the other side of the coin, we're also coming into lucidity about just the situation on earth and just how much pain and misery that has, you know, been created on this planet. And we start to realize that, you know, the only thing that's going to start to shift those energies and this is something that we experience on the inside, right? With, you know, demons or whatever. Like, um, there's a point where we get beyond being psychically attacked because our knowing of who we are as a divine creator being is so great. We are so deeply connected with our power of divine love that everything that is needing that love, right? Things that are in separation and pain and misery are instantaneously restored in our presence. And... That's a tough gig. I'm still coming into courage around it, <laughs> okay? Um, so, you know. Um, hmm. Do you have something to add from that, Train? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just gonna, like... I mean, yeah, this, this stuff is, is, is definitely challenging, but uh, uh, it doesn't need to be your whole reality. You know, it doesn't need to be, every, you know, spending all your time on it or you're going to go crazy. You know, you can, you can um, move through this and heal this stuff with grace and with um, elegance and... Um, I think honestly that's the only way to do it like effectively well it's like you have to charge up your battery right if you're going into the field and you're not full of love then you're just gonna get you know mm -hmm. totally messed up but like if you are so full of god's love and you go in there and everything's just like this morning we're doing this meditation you want to tell about your elevator mm. uh <laughs> 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 just put you on the spot there <laughs> um Basically, I just, I realized that like for um, like all the darkness in the world, like you, you, we have to open up our heart and offer love to it. You know, uh, gone are the days where we have to go into battle and, and kill other humans to, uh, you know, pr to preserve our, our safety. You know, at least in North America and the Western world, like most of the world, most places in the world, you know, or a lot of the places in the world. Um, you know, in the past, there would be ar armies couldn't be encroaching on your lands and uh, into your cities, into your, you know, into your kingdom or whatever it is. And, um, and you, you had to, that you, you had no other option than to go out there and fight because your loved ones and your children needed protection. And if you didn't go out there and fight, then you're all going to die or going to be a slave. Like, who, you know, there, there's not a lot of things that happen if you don't go out there and fight. And in, in, in those situations and you had to do it and and so there was a lot of honor there was a lot of um, bravery and courage and and respect that was um, uh, you know for for going out there and doing that for your your family and loved ones and um, and your tribe but we don't have to do that anymore and so the, the way you know the way forward is is through offering love to the, to the darkness and op uh, basically opening a bridge to, to start rehabilitating the darkness in, to come back into source, to come back into light. Um, and so that's kind of like the crux of it. And I, I, I just felt my heart was just so open. I felt so generous. I just felt so willing to give love because of the, um, like the, uh, the destination in mind, 
you know, the destination in mind, w uh, in, like at the end of the day, overcame everything else, right? And so just the, um, the prospect of living in a, in, a, in a, like on the new earth, like in a new world, in a golden age, it, it just overcame everything else, um, overcame the fear, and I just opened up and offered love, and um, yeah. I want to give a shout out real quick, always uplifting. Um, I wasn't sure if you were still here, but I just want to let you know that I did see your earlier comment and I'm just sending you so much love. In fact, let's all just give always uplifting a huge cosmic group hug. Um, know that everything's going to be okay and you're not alone and you got this. You got the light of divine love inside of you and you can grow that seed. And we're always here in support and it's so beautiful this community that we're building because you know i feel like these vibrations are quite triggering to people that you know don't actually want to do any work <laughs> so at this point i feel like all those people have, have left <laughs> and the only beings that are left are are really here to support each other and recognize the importance of cooperation and authentic beingness you know we're not just here to be like it's like yes we're aliens i i get it right and that's great i love aliens i love mount shasta it feels fabulous to be here and you know we just got an important job to do we all came here together for a reason and i mean i feel like the experiences that we're having doing these practices are so exquisite really i just want everybody to know about it because there's no reason for us to be you know rolling around blind on our mission we're meant to do it in style we're meant to be in such joy and grace and radiance as we are you know doing hair flips and you know rehabilitating demons like all in the same stroke of the hand so we got this yeah uh so on that note i'm feeling is there anything you want to close out do you want to say bye to everybody okay Thank you so much, Melanie, for I'll making mostly this thank you to you guys. live thank stream so possible much. today. Thank you. It's so great. so lovely to have you guys mm -hmm. here. I'm just mm -hmm. thrilled to be in your space, in this space with you. I'm thrilled to be in your space, because technically I'm in your space. Yeah, that's true. But you know what I mean, in your energy. So, so yeah. we're really loving. I don't even know where to look. I'm like, I don't know. I just I look at either. myself. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I have I've just been staring there this whole time, but the camera is actually over there. But anyway, um, I think on Instagram, I posted our trip itinerary, and we would love to meet up with you know you guys on our trip because it's so great to meet you guys in real life. You know, it's just better because you're like, oh my god, you're real, you're an actual person, you have hair and stuff and feet. <laughs> Because you can't see your feet right now. Oh, that's you true. You know what I mean? Like, you she know? could just be a, could a torso. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But she has feet and legs. I do have And toes. Those. And mm -hmm. she can walk. Yeah. You know, she's not an android. I promise. No. Me neither, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm not an android. Could be, but I mean, no, I'm not. <laughs> I have this, like, paranoid part that, like, any new person that gets too close to me, I'm like, are you a handler? Did the CIA send you? <laughs> like, I have to, like... <laughs> <laughs> go through this no, long just, array of yeah. checkpoints no, on my end <laughs> i'm just jason Bourne, okay like <laughs> i don't even know who i am remember for the most part you know it's the galactic intelligence agencies that send me protectors and angels but i'm like who are you do you work who do you work for <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> for me to know you to find out you know oh, okay well we love you guys so much. Come hang out with us on Instagram. And we're so excited to share this journey with you. And we never want to leave because we feel so happy to be here with family. Um, we're going to be doing ceremony up on Mount Shasta tomorrow at 6 p.m. So come out if you want to hang out and do some good work together. Or if you want to do like somersaults, somersaults and cartwheels, we're going to do a lot of those as well. It's not the greatest place for that. No, but I mean, it's a lot of rocks. No, exactly why it's the perfect place to do it, so that we be become masters. And then when we're on a flat ground, we're just like the best somersaults, somersaults, somersaulters ever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. We love you, Galactic family all over the earth. We'll see you next week. And um, unless you're on Instagram, then we'll see you soon, tomorrow. You know, every day. If you can't get enough <laughs> of our shenanigans. <laughs> okay. Okay. We love you. Love you. Bye. Goodbye.